Hello everyone, my name is Marisha. Today's topic is finding the right answer because everybody wants answers. People want to know the answers to their situations, the answers to solve the world problems, how to get out of this, what to do next. We want answers. People want answers. People will fast 40 days, 40 nights, but don't even, they will tell the Lord, I will fast this much time, Lord, sun down, sun, sun up, sun down, and don't even do it. People really, the Lord of God tells you, like, people will afflict themselves to know what God is saying, but yet they're not humble. Yet they are prideful. They're wicked. Their motives are wicked. The, the reason why they do the decision that they choose, it's not right. It's not right. I was not, not, or it's not the right time. So what do I do? Should I forsake the Lord? Should I go find other answers? Because Jesus Christ is clearly not the answer. Because I know my friend told me if I did this drug, if I do this, if I do yoga, if I do be a Buddhist, if I'm a Muslim, if I'm this, like it's less, it's lesser things, it's lesser rules, it's, it's it's less. Like no, it's not. I'm telling you, it is harder to be a sinner because it's, you're, when, you, when you're a sinner, you're under confusion, you're under the curse, and there's no light but darkness. So it's gonna. You, you think you found a way out, but it's you You put yourself back in the pit. You put yourself back into the problem, back into situation. Like, oh, I thought I had it, but I knew. You did not know. You did not know. You don't, you don't know. So we have to submit to Jesus Christ to understand the ways of life, to understand your purpose, to know what to do. What should I be doing now? When should I be doing it? The Lord needs to give you direction, direct your steps, direct your steps. You need to be humble. You need to be humble. You need to humble yourself before God because don't let the Lord, don't let the Lord, don't not let the Lord humble you. King Nebuchadnezzar tells us clearly how it went, how it happens. Like, if you're prideful, the Lord will make you a base. He did that to King Nebuchadnezzar. Like, why are you, why are you always bring it up? Because that's a prime example of man. You know, when you're a person, man with power, when you have power, authority, and influence, it's easy to get big minded, big headed. It's easy. I you can I make credit. Mark Jacob by Mark Jacob. Like you you need credit for everything. Your name has to be all over. But like, no. Don't you know it is God that gives knowledge to man. But yet Satan pervert perverts it. Like so now people instead of giving credit unto God, no, it's them. Or they give it to credit to this false God. Oh, it's the tree God. It's the sun god. It's the elephant god. The elephants are the gods of the land. The tiger, the praying mantis, the panda, the this is so sacred. The cow. Don't like really. This this is what this is what God says. Like the reason why men are confused. The reason why there are is evilness. People are up a bit in their mind because people are ungrateful, and they choose not to acknowledge God the way He is. They choose to make Him seem like something inc inc um, corruptible. Oh, the sun. This, God, can't really, God is going to get rid of the sun when he comes back. When Jesus comes back, God is going to get rid of the sun because there's no sun because he is the light. And the sun is the closest thing to him. Oh, so the sun is a God. Like, no, it's not. It just it expresses God. Like, everything God creates expresses him. The uniqueness, the divine, the power, the sovereignty, the divinity, the goodness, the knowledge, understanding, the love. The patience, like it takes time to create, but only took seven days. That's quick. Yes, because he has the power to do so. Remember, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. Come on. It didn't take him a thousand years to build the world, build, um, have create the heavens and the earth and the people and the land and the plants. It didn't take that long. You that thousands of years took seven days. Then he, you know, six days. Then seven days he took. He had to rest. And people would say, oh, that's why we need, we need to hold the Sabbath. Jesus Christ didn't hold the Sabbath, people. Jesus Christ did not hold the Sabbath. David did not. King David did not hold the Sabbath. The forefathers weren't able to hold the Sabbath and be holy. So that tells you the laws of Moses, that way is not suffice. It's not enough. It's inadequate. It's not sufficient. And this is why Jesus had to die for us because he is the Sabbath. He is the Master of it, he is. He's the he's the representation of the rest of God, the holiness of God, and that's why it's not a Sabbath on on Saturday, but it's every day. 
he is separate so you have to be holy every day and just on oh i need to make this day sacred to work no you be religious what about my sunday through friday you act foolish but saturday oh, i gotta be holy i got i have to be holy i gotta be home this time for sunday so i can't eat this 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 but it doesn't matter what you eat jesus said it does not matter it's not what goes in the body that defiles is what comes out so what are you saying what's coming out of your mouth what what are you thinking what is going on in here what's going on in here what are you what are you allowing to go in here what are you allowing to see what are you allowing to be a part of your makeup you know it's not just the food that contributes to our body it's things that you watch things that we say your emotions contribute the way your body functions anger sadness distress like a lot of people who have to do with depression they have heart issues like their heart is faint like they have heart problems yeah you're very emotional you have heart problems people with anger issues got some adamant problems like they're always angry yeah because anger lies in the bosom of fools like, yeah you you like anger yeah you got some adamant stomach problems yeah because anger lies there and you're a fool you're a foolish person to sit there and be angry all the time and deferred hope makes the heart sick like you you're hopeless always oh, oh, so, so depressing life is so stressful i just don't know I, every time i try to hope it just it's just so hard and i can't yeah it makes the heart sick that's why you need to take medication i gotta take medication i don't i don't know what to do i don't know yeah and then that medication also have side effects and trying to keep your heart in check but now it's destroying other organs so there's a blessing right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Like, yeah, take this drug to help the cancer go away. Like, no, just the bitterness, just the curse of sin. But no, I do this. Yeah, you do the chemo, you take the pills, and now you have something else. Like, what? Like, yeah. This is what happens when you don't, the Lord is not your trust. Because he's the one who heals the sick. By his stripes, we are healed. And people will say that, yes, I, I receive it. Yes, I receive. I will fight cancer in the name of Jesus. But yet, they don't commit to Jesus. They don't commit to Jesus in their heart. They say they bless him with their words, but their heart is far from him. Like pray. I'm telling you, I'm a person talk to a person. I was like, hey, just pray about your sickness. And they and they I told them, like, well, when you said that, that made me really sad that you said that. I told you, hey, you should pray about it. And you said, and he was like, whoa, did I say that? Like, yes, you said that. And that hurt my heart. Like, I thought you were a man of faith. What, what happened? That's discouraging to hear. I told you, you should pray about it. And you, years later, yeah, when you, you even said it at your mouth. You didn't want to pray. Like, oh, I really said that. Like, yeah. You see, like, discouragement just have control of the body that much. You're quick to response in anger and sadness and discouragement and unbelief that's not make a christian remember judas did the works with jesus just him out he ate slept walked around he's of the elect the chosen the people to be to walk with him but yet he's the traitor he's the one who betrayed jesus with a kiss he betrayed his family along with all the betrayers jesus healed their family Delivered them, fed them, crucify him. Like, yeah, his friends just to like, yeah. But that doesn't mean, yeah, I see, so you can't trust people. That's why I don't go to church. Because you never know who fake, you don't know who is real, you don't know who is what. But Jesus was dumb and blind, meaning he was aware of the decision making everybody was going to do. He didn't be like, you know what, I don't want, he didn't say, you know what, I don't want to heal you today. You know what, I don't want to bless you today. You know, I don't want to teach you because I know. In three more days, in a month, matter of fact, 20 years from now, remember he's 13 years old, speaking to the physicians, the philosophers, the doctors in the temple. You know what? I, I don't want to waste my time right now because in 30 years, your kids, you're going to you're gonna tell people about me. And your same kids later when I get old, they're going to reject me. So I'm not going to preach to you. You know, I'm not going to. He didn't do that. And he was aware of what's going in their hearts, in their minds, in these moments. He kept going. He kept going because he had a what? He had a job to do. He needed to do his father's business. And babies, too. They're aware of it, too. What do you mean? Babies don't have us. Science says 
they only remember by age three, four. See, this is why God's understanding is higher. Remember, God make people with purpose. He tell He was able to tell some people, and you are told too by His word how you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God chose you before you were in your mother's womb. So you have a purpose. He didn't have to tell your mom because your mom thought it was probably was a prostitute. Your dad was just you know. It was one of those nights, he's a rich physician, rich person, and just those nights, tired of his wife. He got a prostitute, she's pregnant, and 20 years later, she come back, hey, this is your child. Thank you for sending me money, but I don't want the child anymore. Take it, like, oh, I have a dad. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you might have some, you might have situations that way. Oh, your, your parents were just, you know, college people, boyfriend, girlfriend, middle school. Things happen, didn't work out. Now you're here. Why am I born? It's not fair. Like, no, you have a purpose. You have a purpose. Rahab, prostitute, married somebody from the lineage of Judah, which is in the blood in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Samson, mother was told. Hannah told God that she wanted to give Samuel away. Elizabeth, John the Baptist, leaping in her stomach when she heard when he heard. Mary's voice. So children are aware. They are alert. So don't curse a child. People curse their children. People will curse their children even before the child comes out. I remember hearing a story about a lady and her husband, a boyfriend. I'm not sure what it was. They are together. He wanted the lady. He killed the child, and she said no. Like kill a child, and it's like try to beat her, kill her, kill the child. I don't want the child. We don't need the child. And the child got older, just hate the father. Never, it was not good. It wasn't, it wasn't well, it wasn't good. So you don't want that. You don't want to speak death over it. Cause remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you speak, you have the power to speak life and death. So we're going to be mindful of what we're saying and what we are taking and what, we, what are we allowing to settle in our emotions and our minds. Because that becomes part of your belief. Because things are not dealt with. It's going to stick to you. Oh, you didn't clean your room. There's, there's a stench. Okay, that smell is going to be a stench on you and your clothes and everything. Oh, you you, you, you cook food and you don't want to clean up after. So you don't want to clean the fish. I never realized how strong fish has a smell. I love eating fish. But that's, that's, that fish, fish has a strong smell. And if you don't clean properly, that smell is going to linger and it's going to smell bad. Yeah, that is how sin is. That's how doubt is. That's how discouragement is. That's how unbelief is. That's how cursing God is. Saying no to God when God says yes. Saying yes to God when God says no. It stinks. It will linger. It is not good on your record. It's not good. But Jesus Christ is here to clean your record. God's going to forget all your sins once you commit wholeheartedly. People say, oh, once saved, I was saved. And go back to the marriage. Like, no, I got baptized. I go to church every day. I'm in a choir, I sing, I play the instruments, I'm a teacher, I'm this, but yet their heart is far from them. And these are the main people, they want to throw in some black spirituality, they want to throw in some um, witchcraft, wizard, crazy crazy stuff in the teaching. Like, no, that's, that's what you call sheep, wolves in sheep's clothing. Like, there are people with no good intentions, no good motives. And want to throw things out there, in there, like in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. They want to throw stuff in there, like, no, you, you messed up. This is this is devil. Now, in this point, this is called doctrines of devils. You cannot have Jesus and fables and Jesus. Like, like, no, no. Who's the true Jew? Who's just like, nobody. God sees Jews and Gentiles as sinners. Unless you're his son, you are his. Okay? So the Jew don't believe in Jesus Christ, they're going to go to hell. What? That's not fair. Hey, you have to believe in him. You have to trust in him. And Jesus Christ is the only way. And he's the one who gives answers. And he's the one who will give us the peace and give us rest and save him, save us from the wrath to come. What? Yeah. Your, pa your pastor is, so, is just so in love with John 3.16. That's all the piece of scripture you're going to get. You're more than the conqueror. If you're on the God's side, who can come against you? There's a thousand on my right, my right side to surround me, and who surround me, but God is going to protect me. God is my shepherd. 
love your neighbor as you love yourself. God is greater than your heart. Jesus Christ is looking. Yeah, they see all the motivation, the uplifting scriptures, but don't tell about the curses that's on your life because your behaviors, the way you think, the way you act, you're going to be cursed. You're going to have the wrath of God on your life. But God's going to protect his children. Yeah, the world is getting more wicked and evil every day, but God's grace is here more. But going to be a time, it's going to be so, people going to be searching, like, get, like, the five foolish and the five wise virgins. All right. The bride, the groom, the groom is ready to take. Come on, woman, the sorry, virgins to come. And what happened? The foolish, let me have some of your oil so we can go, because you need oil for your lamp for fire to go walk. I'm sorry, we don't have enough for ourselves. Go to the market to see if there's more. And you go and come back, there's, the door is closed. So that's how it's going to be. You may say it's a man to himself. Like, yes, it's a man to himself, but you have to work with each other. You can't do it by yourself. Like, yes, God's going to judge you. You're going to be, it's going to only be you and the Lord together when you are being judged. But he set you with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, the elders, children. We're all together. We are a body. He's making us one. He's knitting us with his love. The Father, Son, and Spirit is making us one with the Father. So we have to love. To love God, we have to love our neighbor, love people as, as love ourselves. If we keep that commandment, we keep all the law, we fulfilled everything. Because it's in order us to love if we obey the way God tells us to love others and, our, and ourselves. So putting God first, others, then ourselves, we maintain the joy. Jesus, others, yourself, to your life. It is good for you, it's good for the soul, it's good to obey the Lord, it's good to fear the Lord. Don't doubt, because doubt will come, discouragement will come, anger will come, frustration, anxiety, these things come. But you are not supposed to sit in it and bask in it. Like, you know, I'm going to bask in my most right now. And I'm going to eat my ice cream. I'm going to fry my Oreos and put barbecue sauce and bacon in there. And go to Checkers and order this um, bacon loaded jalapeno fries dipped in Oreos and hot Cheeto crumbs. Like, no, we're not, not going to sit here up late at night eating breads of sorrow. Because, no, come on. The word of God is what you need. It is the sword is sharper than two, a double-edged sword. And it pierces through the thoughts, the heart, the mind, the spirit, the bones. And the word of God is here to refine us, to help us, uplift us encourage us and correct us people like correction like people think like i'm right what do you mean i'm wrong like no i'm trying to help oh, so not okay sorry the connection went off like no you're not trying to help me you're trying to harm me like no i really want to help you so we have to trust god we have to trust the process we need faith we need confidence in him we need courage every day like you may feel like oh, i don't want to like no watch and pray why the flesh is weak but the spirit indeed is willing like you don't i don't feel like it today what the word god says look at the ant you sluggard like an ant nobody tells him what to do they get ready for the harvest they get ready for the times when it get cold like they get ready no charge they work day and night they don't stop like you you are creating an image of god you need to get it together and stop playing around and not just take motivational speeches. And you need to repent. Because if you're not motivated. Because you get like, okay, yeah. If you're like, you want to you wanna, you wanna always uplift and motivate a person. Okay, but what if that day they don't want to receive that motivation or that? Because what they're dealing with is a heart matter. They need repentance. They need to save. They need someone to help and lead them. But they, they refuse leadership. They refuse Jesus Christ. They refuse holiness. They refuse sanctification unto the Lord. They want to be rebellious. They want to be lustful. They want to flirt. They want to make money. They want to rise up and grind and however, whatever it takes to make them feel good. They do what they do. Do what they want to do. Heck no, that's not the way. If that's the case, you're gonna just be busy, slothful, and business. You're lazy, but yet you're busy. How can? What does that mean? What you the work the work you're doing is vain. It's pointless. It's useless. You're doing so much for nothing. It's not benefiting you or others around you in the Lord. Because our main goal in this life is to please the Father. 
And that is what people are trying to do to get pleasure. But for themselves rather than the father. Like, no, we need to give God pleasure. Give please him because he created us for him. We are his bride, his bride. We are the bride. We need to please the husband. We need to love him, submit to him. Agree, he is our covering, he is our dad, our friend, and our judge. But if you oh he's a, he's a good, good father. Like he's a good, good father. Come as you are, just as you are, come in. Like, yeah, you, you come as you are and you better change and you better look like Jesus. After you after you leave me, you come in. If you come as you are, all right, now you should be leaving more like Jesus. Not that's an issue. You go to church and you're not a Christian, what do I mean? You want to curse out people. You you speak your mind, you don't care. You it's the truth. I'm 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 being honest personally, or cut off everybody, hate everybody, and just, you know. Every man to himself. That's why I hate people. This is why I don't like people. I don't like men. I don't like female. I don't like nobody. Like, leave me alone. Well, Elijah, he did that to Elisha. He wanted to be alone. Like, all right. But he knew when to get back. But his time was, he knew he was about to die. So he just knew. It's like, I got to go. The Lord's going to come get me soon. I'm aware. I'm ready to go. But other than that, he was with people. He had a servant with him. He was. He I mean, he left at one time because he was afraid. Why? Because he thought, because he was, he, uh, Jezebel was after the kill. Was, Jezebel was going to kill him. That's the main reason why he left by himself, running away to himself. Because he like, hey, I'm about to die, Lord. That's why I'm leaving. I'm the only person who's good, Lord. You may think I'm the only one who's good. So that's why I don't go to church. That's why I don't listen to pastors because, you know, there's hypocrites. People after your life, people don't, people don't know the gospel no more. But yes, I understand there's some false prophets out there. And Jesus warned us of that. But that should not be an excuse or the reason why you don't go to church. Like, you need to submit. That's when you have a problem of not of having, you lack like submission. So, therefore, you are prideful. That's why you need to, you want to isolate and do things on your own. Lean on your own understanding and not acknowledge God. Because acknowledging God, there is leadership and there is structure. It's not every man to himself. Jesus is my pastor, my shepherd, my prophet. Like, no. Their structure. God uses man. Because man caused the problems. He uses man. To, and teaches them how to fix it. But man chooses. Like I can fix it. I can do it. Little kids tell you. I can do it. And you can't do it. I can do it. And they do it. And it's just. But yeah. That's how the Lord sees us. There's still children in his eyes. But babes. The little people. Like. They don't know nothing. I do know I got this degree. I have this scholarship. I'm this nice. I have this IQ. I have a top. I have the top um, graduate score in my seminary school. I was graduate. I was top this. I know. I know. You don't know. But people, we fall short. That's not an excuse. Oh, you see, yeah, we fall short. That's why I can't go to church. That's why I, I can't. People are sinners. How I'm, I'm going to submit to a person who falls short? You fall short yourself. So why submit to yourself? So you're being a hypocrite to yourself. Like, come on now. You can't work by yourself to get the work done. Jesus clearly worked with others. He could have got them myself, but no, to show us how to live. Hey, there's structure, there's order, and this is going to be it. Peter's going to be the head of the church. I'm going to call him Satan because he's acting like Satan, so I'm going to address his way of thinking. That's like Satan, so I'm going to call him Satan. But yeah, I'm still going to bless him. He is still going to be the one who's going to be the one who started the church. Yes, even though he's the one who's going to deny me three times before the crop crows, he's still going to be the one who's going to be the one to start the church. After it happened, Jesus died. Or before he died, before he got crucified, Peter denied him three times. And then the crop crowed. Oh, Jesus said this. The guilt, shame. Jesus come back to them, tells them, hey, go here. He leaves. Come back, like, hey, and tells him, like, do you love me, Peter? Yes, God, I love you. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, God, I love you. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, God, why? You know I love you. Feed my sheep. He told three times after, after each time he asked him, do you love him? He said, yes, I feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So you need to be feeding sheep. If you're not feeding sheep, you're not doing nothing to add value to you as a disciple of Christ if you're not 
helping. Oh yeah, that's why I, I don't go to church. I stay home. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Pack. I'm on podcast. I'm a whole social page network. Like I'm a, I'm a pastor. You know, you don't need a degree to be a pastor. God chooses anointed. God pick. God picks. So yeah, you go to church. All right. You she must be in my me. So you so much to yourself. So prideful and so big headed. You're rejecting God right there. You're rejecting the order, the structure of God. So that marks you as disobedient. You're classified as Satan's child. Well, people hurt me in the church. Woe to those who cause offenses. Offenses will come. The Lord said, talk to the person if they offend you before you come to the mega sacrifice. If you want to come worship me, make an offering, go talk to the person you know you have problems with. Or if you cause one, go talk to them first. Then come to me. All right? And then you, if you talk to the person, the person don't work out, okay, bring in one person who, with wisdom, who more righteous, not your peer, your buddy, buddy, friend. Like, no, you, someone who has wisdom and counsel and they're holy, they have a good reputation as a Christian, let them be the judge. If that doesn't work, you bring them to the whole church like, hey, this happened and this is not going. All right? So then it, it got to the part. Like you started in little court, maybe now you're in, you need a little city court, county court, state court. It got bad, it goes to the supreme, the whole church. Like, hey, this is a matter, let's settle down. But the Lord of God, what did God say? Why did you go to the court, this go to the courts and feel for a matter? Like, you both go to church, so you you go to the unbelievers to judge a matter. Like, don't you have judgment? Don't you have the word of God to judge? Like, why do that? So, people do that. I, I need counseling. And go to psychiatrists who don't believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, they they understand my religion because during right during the form, they they told me to check which religion I am, so they respect religions. No, they don't. But it took a like a let me see a four month spirituality class about religion, and they 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 believe they're a guru, they are monk or enlightened, they're a Christian. They understand all religions. No, they don't. It's false. It's fake. Vain philosophies, like they don't. Oh, this is how man works. This is why man has religion, and now you have to understand. And this is how a, a married couple should. But yeah, these are the same people who believe in masturbation. They believe in having affairs. They believe in animals and people just doing things like perverted people. You got perverted people to get advice. Yeah, you're messed up. And yes, you hate God because you refuse to ordinance in the knowledge of God to judge a man if you want to go to the secular because no I'm gonna feel bad if I go to my pastor the them because you know we're Christians and then I feel ashamed I feel ashamed like that's a shame that you feel that way then that means that person must like love for you to be afraid to go to them they oh they don't have any time they're always so busy you know they're a pastor oh yeah what what what's pastor oh I'm pastor another job we have a job like what this is not a job as a pastor this is you know, he's not a shepherd he has another job. He does other things. Oh, he doesn't love you. He doesn't love you. But yeah, you gotta make ends meet, you know? No. So you don't love him either. Okay, that's why that's why that's the issue. You don't love your pastor, and your pastor doesn't love you. And you guys don't love the Lord. There's the answer. And that's why your marriage had problems. You don't love the Lord altogether. Your religion, the people you submit to hate Jesus Christ. You hate Jesus Christ, your husband hate Jesus Christ, your wife hate Jesus Christ, your pastor, your leaders. You all hate Jesus. You all go to church in competition with each other. The pastor coming down in a stretcher, coming down in a motorcycle. The first lady has mop hair, plastic on her head, touching the ground. Has wings on her eyelids. Like you like you guys like fake stuff. This 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 is the this is the issue. You guys like fake stuff. You like fairy tales. You like you like false false things. You lack the truth of God. You lack the fear of God. Because the fear of God brings understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. And you lack all of it. So you need to repent. You need to repent because what your heart wants is what you, you what you love is what your what your heart wants is what you really want. If if Jesus is not the center, if he's not the reason you do things, if he's not the like your fuel, he's not your life, he is not the one you go to get answers to, something else has your heart, and that's your God, and Jesus is not your God. 
yeah, I know. That's why I renounced the faith. Jesus is not, he's not, he's not the true God. Because he wasn't here and this, 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 this happened. Like, oh no, God is here. You just did not receive the way he made things happen in your life. Because remember, he created the heavens and earth. He has a structure. He is the one who's in control. We have to trust him because what you're suffering through is nothing compared to Excuse me, it's nothing compared to what's going to be revealed. The glory is going to be revealed to it. You were subjected to, like, suffering, problems, like, adversity. Like, you, he put you there for, he made you go through that for a reason. He made you go through that for a reason. And hope you will go to him. So, you know, tribulation brings patience. And patience is hope, and hope brings faith. So you go through these things so you can depend on the Lord. Because if you had it all together, you had the money, you had the perfect childhood, you had the perfect life. You would think, why do I need God? I have everything I needed. I never, I mean, I never, I never went through uh, racism, discrimination. I never got bullied before. I never, I always had the right shoes I wanted, the perfect dress, the hairstyle, the food. I never went hungry. I never seen problems in a day of my life. And we see what happened to Solomon. Like, yes, he had everything, the wisdom, but yet. Yeah, his heart was turned. Decisions he made, he had it all good. He had it all good. But the Lord didn't curse him, but he cursed his son because he had a promise to David. So God keeps his promises. God is not a man that he should lie. So you need to submit to God and stop accepting the lies because the lies, the false, the fake world, sin is distorted, it messes up your, your vision, it's deceptive, it's deceiving, and it's death. So you go to Jesus Christ, he gives you life, and he will give you answers. Oh, wait, you have to be born again. You need to repent. You need to be born again. As in baptism, you die in the water. When you get to, you plunge down, you come back out. You resurrection, you're alive again in Jesus Christ. And you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and live a lifestyle as a Christian every single day. Pick up your cross every day. Live as a living sacrifice every day. So it takes commitment. It takes intentionality. And even though things happen, you see things like that's messed up. Like that should happen. Like no, you bring it to the Lord and tell him. Like David is a perfect example. That's why. He, that's why he's the heart of God. He went to God for everything. You read him. You read about him in Chronicles, in Kings, and you in Samuel. You would think. Like, this guy is so mighty and bold. You read Psalms, like, what? He said, what? I just, I'm like, man. He was scared this whole time. He was afraid. He was. He didn't trust God majority of the time. He a complainer. He a crybaby. He saw he's a chicken. Like, yeah, but he knew where his strength was. That's why he was able to encourage himself in the Lord when everybody wanted to kill him, stone him. He's the king. He's the one. Who won all the battles killed your life and not you know you it's your fault we lost our children and our wives and our stuff we're gonna kill you he left Lord what to do people saying this God said go he has given it to them and when they went they got the wife and their children and their things and the spoiler of those who took everything but not everybody, everybody people want the blessing people want the blessing but the process like hey people are gonna want to kill you People are going to hate you, and you're going to get discouraged. You're going to get angry. You're going to get frustrated. But you have to what? Trust in the Lord. And that's how we get answered. That's how we get clarity when we trust in the Lord and lean not on our own understanding.